Least Portals has pretty much been a universal concept ever since Portal was released. Even outside of challenge mode, the question of can I beat this without the main gimmick has always posed a fun puzzle. But what if, instead of simply avoiding portals, we took the logical next step to avoid anything that could even potentially hold a portal? And this is the question that I set out to answer. So I made a mod that deals some serious damage when you even so much as look at a portalable surface. Now, okay, to establish some ground rules, what counts as portalable is any material that is normally capable of holding a portal. This is your usual white concrete wall panels or floor tiles, as well as some other stuff like grass for some reason. And to make it even less fair for me, physics props could not shield me from what's behind them. In fact, nothing but solid walls could. I had to be constantly aware of what I'm pointing at, even if it felt intuitively safe. And portals were no exception. What's on the other side isn't considered for damage. The simple fact that the portal exists meant that I must already be looking at a portalable wall. The first level was pretty simple. There's a bunch of random non-portalable debris here in pretty much every corner. What wasn't so easy was having to flick to everything. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm no expert at that. The second map is not much different in that sense, though it does teach you one thing. No matter how big the surface is, it will still kill you. Any material that could even theoretically hold a portal is considered off-limits. But still, up until now, we've really only been worrying about these hypothetical and optional portal surfaces. Well, now that we're getting to the portal gun, looking at these walls obviously becomes an integral part of the game. I can't just avoid them forever unless I'm seriously planning to play without any portals. You see, up until now, I've been doing just fine by playing around with perspective, seeing how my position affects the angles that are safe to look at. And while that is a viable tactic, there was no escaping the flicks when it came to actually placing portals. Of course, things only got harder as the levels kept getting cleaner. Eventually, I'd be dealing with almost completely white rooms, but technically, as long as there's even a pixel of non-portalable space on screen, I could just flick back and forth. But for the most part, it was easier to just come up with some clever, minimal mouse movement solution instead. But this didn't stop me from trying to have some fun, though. For almost all of my previous challenges, I'd usually put a timer on screen and make it all about trying to beat the game fast, but you know what? Who cares? It's more impressive to do actual speedrun tricks than it is to slowly, yet safely, crawl through the level. And what's even more impressive is that big, red, healthy subscribe button. Oh yeah, you know what to do. Rather unsurprisingly, I ended up having to do the least portal strats for a few of these levels. Okay, well, it's not like I had to do them, but not having to shoot portals sure as hell made it easier and faster in a way. Yet it still looked pretty cool. Alright then. Oh, nice! Okay, I got it. I'll just get this one to fall through. Okay, uh, look at the wall and then look at the ceiling, I guess. Okay, looks good. Another thing I speculated about early on was that flinging might be pretty bad. You see, there's this cool little mechanic called portal funneling that magically pulls you towards floor portals as long as you look at the portal while falling. But it actually turned out to not be so bad. The threshold for the funnel is pretty damn big. Nearing the end of chapter 1, the level Secret Panel has a pretty famous skip called the Pancake Shot, where you slip a portal through a super tight gap in the exit door. This shot is so precise that it usually requires you to turn down your mouse sensitivity by an extreme amount. But because we're basically blindly lockpicking a portalable surface here, I would die instantly with no warning if I took too long after finding the right coordinates. I had to literally flick less than 0.01 degrees, shoot a portal, then flick back in order to not die. Now that that's all done though, the cutscenes were pretty safe. In fact, you can't even take damage during a cutscene anyway. But with the conclusion of the wake-up sequence comes the dual portal device, which never really makes things easier in these challenges. 
this just meant that the solutions were gonna get much slower and much flickier. First, I had to spend a good few seconds before every turn thinking about where to go next, and then spend a bit more time actually getting there without dying. Most of the puzzle solving became a sort of minimal moves gimmick, yet I still tried to use speedrun strats as much as possible, even going as far as avoiding intended routes where they were clearly easier. Um, I don't actually know, like, intended is safe, but it's boring, so maybe a cube hop? But after trying this for a good 5 minutes, the balance between a sick trick versus some actual progress kinda started to weigh on me. Okay, I'm just gonna do intended, fuck this. Like, okay, I'm not the type of guy to give up without a serious grind, but I also didn't want to subject my live audience to 10 more minutes of the same cube hop. Also, remember what I said about the flings? Well, there's actually another issue. If I ever need to strafe after the fling, like on this here map, I have to keep away from the portal up until I'm all the way through on the other side. So in this case, I just opted for a similar but much easier strat, kinda hoping that this problem won't get brought up again. Now, on this map, I had that same urge to do something different from the norm, something fun. My plan was to pull off an old speedrun route, reportaling off the floor to gain some height, then sniping one of the angled surfaces above. And this time, I actually did make some progress, but doing these floor reportals was kinda tricky, seeing how the floor level is entirely surrounded by portalable walls. So again, in favor of progressing the game, I did the simpler stuff. Well, I say that, but it's not like it was easy to begin with. Soon enough, lots of these strats started requiring proper choreographies for every little trick. They were definitely fun to plan, and I think it does look cool too, but then most of the deaths start piling up from simply retrying that same thing over and over. And speaking of retrying the same thing, when we arrived to Ricochet, I was eager to try out the speedrun route here too. Everything is technically a run if you've got a timer next to it, and for, for this run, you've got my streams timer. Oh, come on! No! Fuck, I didn't re-grab the cube! Okay, so we had like one good attempt. That could have been it had I re-grabbed the cube or made a quick save. I only tried this jump for like a total of 10 minutes or so, and then decided to actually make some progress and try the simplified version. Same sort of concept, just without the whole mid-air cube grab insanity. Bridge the Gap was the first instance of my hops being noticeably impacted by these restrictions. I was attempting to hop past this door, right before it starts glitching out, to skip the cutscene, which is a pretty popular speedrun trick that just kinda looks cool in general. But since everything past that door is portalable, I had to very carefully avoid looking too far up. And this time, I wasn't really dying to the damage or anything. I kept resetting because I wasn't hopping fast enough to pass through the door. It was probably the awkward strafing that threw off my hops. Or it could have been the fact that, in Portal 2, you accelerate slower in air if you're not looking perfectly straight. Or it could have also been that I'm just bad at the game. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's probably that. Other than that though, the rest of this chapter just consisted of more flicking and juggling between surfaces, with some weirder exceptions like portable glass, uh, ghost turrets, I, yeah, I don't know. I did also manage to pull off the damage boost on turret blocker and the cube grab thingy on, on column blocker, but that's not really anything too crazy or remarkable. Oh, and of course. Guys, guys, there's something wrong with the walls of my chamber. Fortunately though, as much as my chat did genuinely fear this level, I already had a strategy planned for it. And that also marks the end of GLaDOS's test course, as we're brought into the behind-the-scenes areas of modern Aperture. This would speed up the progress significantly. At least for this section, as there are almost no portable walls here. It could also just be that, by now, I had developed a pretty good feel for the restrictions. I got a lot more used to my sensitivity and flicks. But yeah, pretty much this entire escape sequence was doable with standard speedrun tricks. I'll just pre-shoot this portal, and then I'll try and strafe into it and look sideways. Like this. Oh, okay, that actually worked? What? I was just spewing bullshit, but that actually worked. And then I died to the panel that just moved away, okay. 
The beginning of the old aperture section was similar in that sense. It uses portal services mainly for navigation to show off the scale of that whole area. But once we got to the test chambers, oh no, you see, that's when everything remained pretty much the same as it was before. I mean, sure, I guess the areas between chambers and the generally unclean nature of the time let me pick up pace a bit more, but it's not like the same game with a different coat of paint has any right to significantly affect the difficulty. I will say though that this part of the game has more of the funkier strats that you don't really get to see all that often. Most of them just required some extra planning and quicker flicks, but because of how these levels are laid out, there also happen to be a lot of these super precise portal shots. For example, the crazy box seam shot did mess with me a little. This one's kinda similar to that shot at the end of chapter 1, just a lot more precise and tedious. And with this mod, for some unexplainable reason, my pitch angle was slowly drifting downwards without me actually doing anything. Technically, this isn't anything new. It's actually pretty common to get this bug in a speedrun, and usually all you have to do in this case is just jump through a floor portal and that should fix it. Except that it didn't, at least not this time. So I had to go for the slightly slower, yet arguably cooler strat. Other, less precise shots, like this one on Propulsion Intro, didn't really pose that big of an issue. Angle drift is only really a problem when one thousandth of a degree counts as significant. Finding a way to actually get to the end here, however, did take a good 10 minutes or so. The usual strats all required either a wall or a floor re-portal, which, I mean, come on, it's literally got portal in the name, I, I don't think I need to spell out why that's a problem. So I took a bit of an L here and used the propulsion gel instead. And soon enough, conversion gel got introduced. And as some had already speculated, this was actually completely safe to look at. Remember, the mod only really looks for portable materials or textures. The gel doesn't change the texture of what's below it, so that sort of meant that the rest of this map was almost completely free, as it doesn't really have that many real portal surfaces. After that, to conclude chapter 7, three gels started off with a pretty lucky first try portal shot for the stock launch gel, which then took a few attempts for me to not die while making the midair portal shot. And then to finish it off, a classic yet fairly cautious tube bounce. Alright, chapter 8. Apart from opening up with arguably the dumbest set of puzzles, this part of the game houses the funnel, a mechanic oh so precious to speedrunners due to the infamous crouch fly glitch. Now I know what you're thinking. Yes, this does usually take a lot of the gameplay out of my challenges, but it's not like this one has anything to do with movement anyway. And besides, a bit before this, I had run a prediction in my Twitch chat to let people gamble on whether or not I'll beat the game with under 800 deaths, and this really had the potential to speed things up significantly, to prove the doubters wrong. So, of course, the first question I asked when entering Funnel Intro was, can I get CFG here? To which the answer was, well, complicated. It was definitely possible, but it sure took a hot minute. And now that we're back in modern aperture, everything is so shiny and white you'd think we're permanently stuck in triple laser. I was back to being overly cautious of my crosshair placement while also trying to pull off whatever speedrun tricks I could. Though it's probably worth the mention that I didn't really keep the fly glitch throughout the game. I just sort of followed the speedrun route, which has you get rid of it on polarity and regain it on laser catapult. But even then, the levels in between were surprisingly not all that bad. Another interesting thing is that in Portal 2, most types of damage give you a slight kick downwards, which, when combined with a zero gravity fly glitch, makes it pretty hard to keep flying in a straight line without dropping altitude. Regardless, I was very steadily approaching the finale, with only a couple of pretty simple puzzles remaining, both of which are relatively easy to skip thanks to crouch flying. And here we are, the finales, the part where he kills you, or at least he tries his best, that's for sure. I got to actually use the damage kickdown to my advantage for once, right before getting killed by it, but other than that, this was smooth sailing for the most part. 
Well, okay, I guess Finale 3 got a little bit weird, but that's mostly due to my incompetence at speedrunning this game. And the final boss fight, as pretty much everyone had guessed by now, was horribly anticlimactic. Since we already established that Gel isn't really affected by this mod, I had absolutely no issues with speedrunning it as per usual. So, after making sure that I'm at 690 deaths, nice, I resolve the stalemate and, well, good game. I, I guess. I'd give this mod like, I don't know, a, a 6, maybe a 7 out of 10. You know, it started off pretty good at the start, um, I don't know, not too sure about the ending though. Oh, you should subscribe though. I I am sure of that, 100%. If if not more, like uh like 110, 120.